Yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, it doesn't matter how bad it sounds. It's still going to be awesome. So, I mean, it, you can't really go wrong. It's uh, It might even be better if it's crappy. <laughs> Hello, number one crude mistakes with myself, Glenn from Number One Projects, Havard from Behakes, and KJ from Crude but Efficient. Hello, gentlemen. How are you this evening? Hello. Good day. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah. evening to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going good day? Good day. Good day. Because you came over all Australian and it's past your bedtime. Good day. Good day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good day, mate. Yeah. It's passed into another time zone. <laughs> actually it's and now we're getting close to daylight saving times as well so i see some have already started so yeah america's already done it now. yeah weirdos yeah <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> they are doing it wrong so they can have it yeah well i i mean i mean it i'm not saying sorry for that it's just uh, <laughs> if you just now realized it's like Sorry on your behalf. We were just <laughs> for being a week. We were just talking in the house half an hour ago about how you two manage to alienate someone every week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we keep racking up listeners, and we're trying our best to keep it like on a low level. But no, at least one in, one out. I think. <laughs> yeah. So apart from offending people, what have you two been up to? <laughs> and me included on that list, by the way. <laughs> when you put it like that... <laughs> nothing. We've done nothing but offend for the whole week. Some might some might say, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I, I've started, I've actually uh, started on the table renovation. And so far, so good. Everything has worked according to plan, which is a bit scary when you you thought about something for a long while and then you actually managed to execute it that's uh, and i mean this is me using the table saw properly for the first time and that went pretty okay and then i used the palm router i bought a while back and that also worked pretty okay wow so it was it was i mean the thing i've seen people do this online lots and lots of times but i haven't done it myself so how hard can it be <laughs> so well there is some really fast spinning blades and stuff, so things could go sideways pretty fast, but so far everything's broke out. It's starting to look a lot like real woodworking, KJ. Yeah, I know, it's really weird. <laughs> uh, running out of clamps, it's the uh, first time for me, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I need to, to get some more if I'm gonna, uh, when I'm gonna push on with this, because otherwise it will take too much time just to wait for the glue ups <laughs> how was the uh, how was the palm router that was the first wasn't it yeah uh, scary but uh, functioned really really well yeah so did you cut all the thin strips yeah. on the table saw as well yeah I started cutting them down uh, like three four millimeters too long on the table saw and then trimming off the rest with the router yeah. like a proper woodworker <laughs> <laughs> it really feels <laughs> Out of character. <laughs> Is it feeling too easy? Uh, a bit. It felt like something should have gone wrong at this point. Yeah. It felt like, yeah, around the corner, a big cat catastrophe is waiting. <laughs> something like that. And that might be the sanding part because I haven't gotten that to that stage yet to see how much of the veneer just goes flying when I try to lightly <laughs> sand off the the finish that is on it. Uh, and then we come to the to the tough part of choosing a new finish oh. for for the whole thing. What are you going to go for? I think I'm going to go. I mean, the, 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 this is perhaps where the crude but efficient part comes into <laughs> it. Uh, just going with a spray lacquer from a la rattle can. Okay. Uh, How big's the surface? Uh, How big is the surface? It's a big big table, isn't it? Yeah. One and a half can. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> but I, I, I've been uh, watching a few videos, and uh, Steve Ramsey talked uh, really highly about it, and it looks so much easier than trying to put on something and wait a long while and buff it. And I mean, this this is going to be a kitchen table used daily 
with small children, so it needs all the protection it can get, and then some. Yeah. Uh, so I can't really just do some kind of oil stuff or something like that because that won't work. Uh, and and I mean the the the, the normal way I finish stuff is just uh, boiled linseed oil. I use that for everything, okay. and that don't work in this case. So <laughs> then I don't really know what to do. So I think I'm gonna try with with just a spray lacquer and see how that goes. Fair enough. A friend of mine actually had a table made with the most insane thick tabletop you could imagine because he figured, I'm going to have this table for 20 plus years. And I have two kids. So I put in some allowance so that I can actually, like when there are like 10, 12, of course I can just plane it down (laughs) to get uh, like all the pencil marks and everything off it. And then of course they will enter into a period where they are having like house parties and so on, and people will be dancing on the table. So then again, a few years later when they moved out, uh, I'll just plane it down some more. And then we are down to the thickness that I'll keep it for the rest of its duration. <laughs> yeah. The, my uh, primary work table is actually the old kitchen table we had uh, when I was, uh, when I was a little kid. Uh, and that's, I took that and and just used a electric hand plane and planed it off like a couple of millimeters or so when uh, we moved house and got a new table. And since then, I've used it as a computer table, a work table, and all that. So <laughs> I think it's about time that it should be knocked down a couple of millimeters <laughs> more because it's starting to look look its age. But I mean, it's an old old IKEA table, like five centimeters thick or something like that so it's plenty of material to take i'm on our we're on our third dining room table in this house the first one is a cupboard in the kitchen now which i I chopped up the use the wood Ah. for a cupboard in the kitchen (laughs) and the second one is now my computer desk and then we inherited a a hundred year old uh, farmhouse table which is the current uh, dining room table, which I don't think I'll be recycling into anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was going to say, do you have any plans for that? <laughs> I think we'll stick with that one. Well, it see, it, it wasn't planned at all, but it seems like we have like converged onto a, a table path. Uh, and of course, I have now two table projects. <laughs> one is, of course, the the concrete heating cable table. Say that fast ten times. <laughs> that was a nice, um, catchy title. <laughs> but uh, I stumbled over a sale this week, so of course I've been talking all the time about getting a laser or whatever. But uh, yesterday I went to the post office and got myself a plasma cutter and a welding helmet and some welding from the post helmet. office. <laughs> yeah, well, I order it online, so uh, <laughs> oh, I. <laughs> Um, I thought you were going to say to him, I'm just going to go and buy some stamps, yeah. and then you come home with a plasma yeah. cutter. Stamps, plasma cutter, and I some mean, envelopes, I yeah, and some rules. Re- literally went into Lidl the other day, and they had lathes and plasma cutters for sale there, but I've never seen them for sale in the, pl- in the post office before. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, uh, the postal service is on a downward spiral, I guess, so they need to find compensative measures to uh, <laughs> keep the revenue up <laughs> going into the postal office with a plasma cutter it seems like you're doing a heist of some kind of thing Phil. yeah but that being said of course i have now a plasma cutter do i have a welder no um but i have passed that milestone that i now know which one i will get but i'm thinking i need some more preparation so i've I bought the magnet clamps and uh the thongs or whatever they're called, the clampy thingies. And then, of course, thongs. I I need a, a welding table. And holy shit. <laughs> of course, I want the one with the uh, perforated holes and uh, the clamps and everything. And it's like, that's cost more than all the other equipment. I mean, the, the welder, the plasma cutter, <laughs> like yeah. the table is like twice that amount, even the cheapest <laughs> one. So now I'm going to build a table. I mean, in wood, of course. I mean, <laughs> welding, it's not that hot, is it? Nah, it'd be fine. <laughs> so I actually found one of these um, 
companies that sell these tables. They also sell the tabletops, but they also sell these smaller tabletops that are made for like large, like uh, these um, uh, column drills. Uh, and it's like uh, 600 times 450 millimeters or something. And I think that that's, that's the nice half part of uh, a welding slash cart table thingy my bob so i'm uh, <laughs> i'm gonna make something um but still that uh that smaller steel plate is like 300 euros or something like that so it's yeah. i can't really understand it it's a steel plate where someone has drilled some holes <laughs> why is it so expensive and of course the answer is because they can but yeah it's probably damn flat yeah and those holes are very precise hopefully at that price they should yeah. be hopefully. like in the engineering <laughs> days all the the proper tables were hand flattened metal tables and I, I would imagine they cost a fortune yeah yeah it's a it's a fun fact uh, that uh, in the second world war um Norway actually sank the the battleship Blücher uh, on the like the sailing paths into Oslo, and that has of course been cut into various pieces, and uh, some of those uh, plates are still in use today as uh, like twenty millimeter thick steel plates, which uh, they use to cover up holes in the road when they're digging and so on. Oh. Like at the end of the day, they cover over so people can still drive there. Uh, so uh, they're actually using some old uh, German steel there. <laughs> nice. I think it was Blücher. It was one of the the ships that sunk, and there are not too many of those in Norway. So, so you bought a plasma cutter. You bought the magnets. Yep. You bought a thong. Yep. I don't really want to know about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, you you need welding yeah. clothes. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> it, it looks it it's, it looks loose and like uh, you need the maneuverability. They say <laughs> when you're doing TIG welding. So, I'm hoping yeah. I'm hoping for a flash dance rendition now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So you've got the welders to come. Have you got any welding and cutting projects in mind? Um, stealing a piece of a battleship, it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> just going out in a yeah. night with this plasma cutter and you're removing stuff from the road. <laughs> oh, yes, because I've also Googled the, like various online marketplaces for like steel plates for just having fun with, just to, to get into it again. And I haven't been TIG welding before, so I need just some sample pieces to have fun with. But then again, steel is also expensive these days. Yeah. Um, but one of the projects I want to do, but of course there is um, a bit of air pressure involved, so I, I would like to get a hang of the <laughs> the welding before I go on to it. But I, I want to make a battery compressor operated super soaker, like that old uh, water yeah. gun that we had uh, in the 80s, 90s. I always wanted one, but I never got around to get one. And of course... Now I can make a, a larger, more powerful one. <laughs> so, and of course, the fire extinguishers are easily available. Like people are giving them away on marketplaces. So I can just get a few of those. And nice. Start yeah. start welding, and then of course I can make a a grill and a small furnace and whatnot. I'm gonna try just different things yeah. for a laugh. So a yeah. 700 pound super soaker. Sounds like fun. I'm expecting big things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, yes. Those crowd control <laughs> things you put on a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just, just not repurpose a jet washer? Yeah. Well, mm, you, you suppose you don't really want to re would, remove but... people's skin with it, do you? No, and I want to get rid of the extension cord yeah. and of course now i have uh for the the bug sapper 2000 um i have this battery powered compressor which i mean i, I just need a, a tank with water which you can pressurize and of course you um like the trigger mechanism you can buy for a dollar at uh, any hardware store so and just some piping and uh, i think it's going to be nice and then you can bring it with you <laughs> use it everywhere <laughs> to work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just walked in at work one night, real grumpy, and <laughs> soaked everyone. 
So what have you been up to? I have finished my little guitar. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It turned out really nice. <laughs> you seem surprised. Yeah. No. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I saw... And it's, of course, a, a time delay there. I saw some pictures of you sanding and some wood, and suddenly I saw this uh, beautiful picture of it uh, <laughs> stacked along a tree. I took it out for a walk today <laughs> into its natural yeah, environment. <laughs> <laughs> to see where it came yeah. from. You were once this big and proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mocking the tree. Yeah. I, had, uh, I had some scary moments. Not scary. But yesterday, Steve came over to try it out for the first time. And he got here quite late, so we were a little bit time constrained. And it didn't work. It did work, but it sounded awful. So I think you might understand this, Avard. I don't really. But the where the 12th is, it was in tune on the 13th instead of the 12th. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah, the intonation yeah, of what yeah. it's called, yeah. And um, we looked at it and we couldn't figure out what was going on and then I did some measurements with the template I had and I realized I'd put the um, the bridge too far away and just moving it yeah. um, 15 mil so, yeah. brought everything back into tune I thought I was going to have to redo the fretboard which would have meant basically scrapping it and starting again mm. yeah because in in a lot of the uh, in the guitar bridges the, you have the the adjustability yes. there of uh like a centimeter and a half or something like that. So it's not as crucial to get it spot on. But, uh, and of course, if you go up in thickness, of course, uh, on the string, that sweet spot moves a bit. So it's nice to have that adjustability. And I did not know about that when I built my first guitar. So luckily, before I started <laughs> mounting the bridge and drilling the holes, my father just tapped me on the shoulder. Uh, you should make sure that this distance equals this <laughs> distance. And what? <laughs> I was just aligning them up so they were just fitting onto the fretboard and like, I can just screw it down here. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That's a, that 15 mil made a massive difference. It's put it all in tune and uh, really quite pleased with how it sounds as well. It's like a, a hybrid. The top, the top two strings are very bassy and then the bottom are more guitar-like. So there's yeah. some, some interesting sound yeah. to it. So happy with that. Just got to edit a video now. <laughs> that, that was my next question. So when's the video out? <laughs> it's a little bit problematic. I think I've got a podcast to do this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that takes yeah. time. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll hopefully have the podcast. We should find a solution for that because it's kind of tedious. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we started off well. We had the intern and... Uh, now he's out doing his own thing, so we need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> we need one that's not so su successful. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of editing, I've started to edit my next video, and this time I actually pulled up my grown-up pants and started using DaVinci Resolve. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I've had it installed for, like couple of months but every time i've no no and the next project next project <laughs> do this. next project next next project and i mean it's it's a lot <laughs> that's, i can say that exactly yeah. how i would describe it kj <laughs> i mean i i had to to google a couple of things just to how do i move this thing around okay yeah okay i'm i'm supposed to change the setting for this and what kind of mode i'm in and there's so much to do. I, I'm used to a really simple uh, editing software. And this is not simple, but it seems extremely powerful. So let's see if it makes any yeah. difference to the video. It's a bit of a threshold getting over the initial like settings and how it's built up. But it is very much surrounded around or built up around the workflow. And I also... they. The reason why you can get this software for free is because they are making their money selling equipment, basically, cameras yeah. um, and so on. Of course, you, you can pay for some extra features, but I haven't really been missing any of them. But I have been looking into, they have this uh, specialized keyboard yeah. because I kind of get cramp in my hand because there are some shortcuts that I'm using 
all the time. And of course, you can probably go into the settings and rearrange that to another configuration. But I have this 3D mouse for doing CAD work. And I also see they have like this editing keyboard with a, like a wheel to just spin up and down yeah. on the timeline and so on. And ooh, that's uh, tantalizing. And then, of course, if you buy that, you get a free license for the the upgraded software. I think I read somewhere. So. How much is the keyboard? <laughs> if you, it's probably three four hundred dollars for a smaller one. It's Jesus, I cheap. think something so. like that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I feel like my hands are doing some kind of yoga when I'm trying to use some of the shortcuts because it it feels like it's not in the most simple and easy way they're placed. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I haven't. I have just used it. Uh, like an hour so far, but I'm, I think I'm getting there. I mean, it was the same when we started using Audacity to edit the podcast. That also felt weird. Yeah. And how do I do this simple thing? I have to push this, this. I just this. got on with Audacity <laughs> brilliantly right from the start. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, you're the tech yeah, savvy. Uh, if, you, natural. if you need any help with DaVinci, just give a shout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That being said, of course, it has a like an old timey feel interface, but Audacity is really good for like audio editing, unless you're doing like multi-track recordings and so on. You can do it, of course, but it's a really nice software, but the shortcuts for like zooming in and out the timeline, moving up and down and so on, it's not the same as DaVinci, which yeah. are the two softwares I'm using. And I think it is DaVinci have some similarities to Photoshop. So the switch between those two goes really smoothly. But when I switch into Audacity, it takes the first half hour to just get the hang of uh, <laughs> yeah. toggling the keys and so on. Yeah, that's like uh, switching between computer games where you have the jump button is, uh, is another one. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Do mistakes Except you don't die when you're doing audacity. <laughs> yeah, you just kill your entire project instead. <laughs> I felt like killing myself the first time I turned it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I looked at um, Da Vinci and um, started to play around with it, and my computer went into a meltdown as well as myself. So I just I just uninstalled it and thought that's for another time. <laughs> that's for another computer. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's just, just uh, I had that last year. Everything just compounded. Uh, my computer was too slow for um, Sony Vegas, which I used before, but that was also an old license, so I needed an upgrade. And, of course, I ended up with new software, and then I needed a new computer. And then, of course, then the footage from the phone was crappy, so I needed a camera to film. So <laughs> <laughs> I used a fair bit of money on equipment last year, so this year is going to be no budget. Oh, that's why you've only just started buying tools. <laughs> <laughs> Plasma cutter, yeah. welder, tools, yeah. Mm. I thought it was a tool only year instead. No camera oh, equipment. Yeah. So was how did just going back to the plasma cutter, how did that become top of the list? Over a laser and a three D printer and <clears throat> the stuff you've been wittering on about in the past? It is as simple as I have a short attention span, and I saw something that uh, glitters, and then uh, fair enough. It's um, I was looking for something. I don't even remember what it was, but uh, this one hardware store are celebrating like a, a forty-five year celebration, and they had some ridiculous offers. And then, for some reason, plasma cutters was on top of that list, and they had a many, a lot of them uh, in storage. So I like. Mm, I know I want one, and we discussed it on the podcast last time, though, but maybe I should just like buy the tools because then you're invested in just having to complete it because it is stupid to have welding gloves, welding helmet, uh, and not a welder. So I now started buying that and the small things that doesn't cost much, and at some point I just have to get a welder. Yeah. And then, of course, <laughs> what I didn't calculate on is how crazy expensive the tables are. And then, of course, uh, the gas bottle and uh, all the accessories there. So, I mean, the, the welding table a... isn't something you actually need. 
you don't need need it. You, I mean, you need no. a welder to be able to weld. Yeah, yeah and of course, it's nice to have a good welding table. And it's gonna be nice outside. And I, when I use grind, do grinding work and so on outside, I just use my uh, trailer for the car as a table. It's a huge flat surface, and of course, it also has uh, metal rails, so I can just ground the entire thing. Cool. So, I went to a um, woodworking show on Friday, and I was tempted by a lot of the offers they had on there. They had some really good deals on. Okay, Ro- rolled back. Yeah. Wasn't that your wife going to an event on Friday? And now you said you well, weren't? Did she bring you as a project? <laughs> <laughs> you don't notice the coat of finish. I've got more of a, more of a tan. <laughs> that's why you're listening. <laughs> yeah, is that, uh, is that monocoat? Oh, yeah, it's Ruby and Monaco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah? yeah. Monocoat, light brown. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's pure, actually. You can, pure, definitely <laughs> pure. And uh, yeah. Rubico, Rubico, mid late man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if we're talking about Michelle's day, she had a fantastic time, actually. Um, so the woman who was hosting it, she was on. She won Britain Britain's Greatest Woodworker a couple of years ago. Years ago, on the TV, it's a TV show we have here, and uh, she found her really nice and got on well with her, and they got to play with Festool tools. <laughs> 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 and she said the difference between. Festival tools and my tools is night and day. <laughs> she said they're just, they're really light, they're very quiet, and they're very, very precise. Yeah, yeah. that's what you pay for. Yeah. But then again, that's a wasted money. I mean, yes, you want tools to have precision, but light? No, they should feel a bit heavy. <laughs> that, uh, that's a quality sign, and... Uh, Silent? No. <laughs> I mean, if I paid for tools, I would like to hear them when I use them. So. <laughs> but have your budget for the workshop gone up now? You got a bigger allowance from the family account. <laughs> no. I, I think if she starts buying festival stuff, it'll probably go in her room, to be honest with you. I don't think she'll share. She came back with a couple of uh, Rubio samples, a festival tape measure and a few other goodies. And I've not even touched that tape measure yet. She's shown me. From a distance. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just going to march into the workshop and say, half of this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> you just claim spaces. Yeah, it was dirty. She had, a, she had a great day. She really enjoyed it. It was um, all to do with International Women's Day. Yeah, I saw yeah. some group photo from that. It looked like they were having fun at least. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got a lunch out of it as well. I mean, I'd have gone for the free meal. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I don't see the downside. <laughs> yeah, whereas uh, I travelled twenty minutes down the road to the East Midlands woodworking show. Like I say, I saw some great deals on some machines. Didn't buy anything. It's a good boy. Um, but it it was the uh, same as the North of England one, the uh, York, the Yorkshire one I went to in November. Very very busy. Lots of uh, older gentlemen. Shall we say? I was going to say that because <laughs> I, I seem to see a trend here. You seem to go to awful a lot of these without actually like any purpose or ending up with anything. So is it just to feel young? Is, is this your fix? Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you need a hug? Do you want to talk about it? I mean, oh, we can. I, uh, I would like a hug, actually, Havard. That would be really nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll put it on a list for Maker Central. I've been Central. feeling a bit low lately. <laughs> Mainly on Tuesdays for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. So. I thought you were just uh, practicing for your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do when Going I'm retired? To... Yeah. Or something to to spur you on to work a couple of years longer because you don't want to be stuck with this. I'll tell life. you something. It's well worth sticking with this hobby because, you know, woodworkers do seem to live a very, very long time and mm. still, yeah. still you know, able to carry on going even though they can't walk properly and stuff. So, yeah, I think it's worth sticking with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Missing a finger or two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> when, you st- clam. <laughs> when you start losing digits, that's when you uh, just switch uh, switch off the electronics and just go with 
uh, unpowered tools. Oh, I don't know. You've got ten goes at it, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, but after that, you're pretty screwed at everything else. So I've seen uh, I've seen a lot of people who have lost their hands have adapted in using their feet. So I mean, in reality, you have twenty goes. <laughs> There's some fantastic painters out there, actually, which paint with their mouth or their feet, isn't there? You know, I don't know how yeah. they do it. I can't paint with my hands. Yeah. I was going to say the robot arms have come a really long way in in recent years. So I think, yeah, are they good painters, are they? Goes. <laughs> some, I guess. I don't know. I think you have to be have been a painter beforehand, <laughs> actually. I don't think you magically well, get some painting yeah. skills with a robot hand. <laughs> I don't think so i mean i would agree with you a year ago but uh, seeing now what ai can come up with i mean it's just a <laughs> question of time before that is uh, like a integrated thing of your uh, arm <laughs> like uh, just press a button painting mode and your arm goes all da vinci while you're sitting there uh, just having a bear with the other I hand don't, i don't want to get into <laughs> the other modes <laughs> let's move on <laughs> <laughs> just a woodworking arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's something to work M- the on. The milkshake making mode. Yeah. <laughs> so. About machines and robots and things, I eventually decided to look up uh, Winter Garden. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, absolutely yes. mesmerizing. Is it? Yeah. Let me just go back to the winter garden bit, though. Is that is that just uh, Scandinavian for winter winter garden? No, no it's actually the the Milky Way ah, in okay. Swedish. If I'm not uh, so, yeah, it's, mistaken, it's, it's uh, Winter Street uh, translated straight. Okay, uh, but it's uh, that's the Milky Way. Ah, okay, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Doesn't even lift an eyelid anymore. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I uh, I found the videos just utterly charming, and the sounds that that thing makes is just fantastic. I understand why you've kind of got a little bit obsessed with it, Havard. Yeah, and what really amazes me, I I stumbled over the first video he ever made, which went viral, and then just he got onto the track i should make one that's more durable and i can take it on tour because he actually plays in a band um and then people just got on board so at one point he moved to france and had his workshop there and then he moved back to sweden again but people like they just gave him so much money through Patreon and all these that he just came out and just, I, I'm shutting it down. I have enough money to, to make this 10 times over. This is my full-time job now, so you don't need to nice. like send me any more money. I have what I need. And then now it's just involving a lot of people on various uh, Discord online places and uh, engineers and everything. So it's like outsourcing stuff, and it's really great. Yeah. Fantastic. That's the thing when you get patron enablers that you actually provide you with funds, so you have to do the things that you <laughs> set up to do, yeah, whether you want it or not. But there is actually um, there is a lot of things that are popping up on Kickstarter which gets a lot of funding, but there is nothing that keeps you from just not making it. So there is a lot of uh, people who has pro- they have probably used uh, Fiverr and so on to get people to make uh, nice animations of something that they're planning to build and they made some bullshit <laughs> plan of uh, completion and so on. And then a lot of people have just given a lot of money and then uh, after a while they realize, well, well, they're not gonna make it, so they just take the money and run. Yeah, that's a that's a backside on the Kickstarter. Can you get away with that? Can you? Yeah, yeah. I think so. There is no. I mean, you're you're not legally bound to complete your task because, of course, some of them are not able to be completed of uh, like various reasons. But of course, there will always be someone who used the system. 
But that being said, Wintergatan has really delivered. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's tremendous. I mean, it, is it three, four, five years or something? It's like this has been his full time venture since. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he gets home at night? And think, I don't want to see that fucking marble machine again. <laughs> Driving me nuts. <laughs> I think it was two or three videos ago where he just talked to himself and was like, what are you doing, Martin? It's it's not even about music anymore. I mean, uh, and this really went on questioning himself and his motives. And of course, I felt something <laughs> striking a chord there. So I actually fired uh, him an email and asking if I could just uh, use that clip into uh, one of my Hellcorder videos because... I have been thinking the same thing when I'm opening like a package with a computer and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then I was going to do a mashup with the video there and he answered and yeah, <laughs> use it, please. <laughs> awesome. yeah, that's what happens when you follow the rabbit. Sometimes it takes you weird places. Yeah. Hey, you meant you said the word Halcorder. You got another video out? <laughs> you know, Halcorder yeah. video making machine nowadays, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, as I said in the, the half pint, it's, uh, if I have 10 minutes of footage, it's uh, <laughs> on to the editing machine and post a video. <laughs> Whatever um, will you do when you're, when you're finished with the Hellcorder? <laughs> oh, I have, I have plans for the Hellcorder 2.5 and 3.0, so I think we can keep it a few years. But uh, Nice, nice. I've seen an increasing... Joy, I have a few like regular followers who watch all the videos and really commenting and coming with ideas and they are really starting to see it come together. So the the hype in the comment section is actually increasing. So it's uh, it's fun. It's looking good. It's looking very good, mate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the problem is it's going to look good, but it's going to sound just as <laughs> shit as the 1.0. <laughs> 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 Well, can it even, can it in some, how well can it sound? That, that's it's going to be minus point. the clicking, isn't it, this one? Yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, it doesn't matter how bad it sounds. It's still going to be awesome. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. it, you can't really go wrong. It's, uh, <laughs> it might even be better if it's crappy. <laughs> yeah, that might be. I just said minus the clicking. If you could get a, a, a version of me. Uh, the next version up, you might get some. You might get less clicking in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's the anti Glenn feature. <laughs> less clicking, more wind. <laughs> I think we'll stay with the clicking. That's, yeah, that's yes, easier please. to edit out. <laughs> but that be that being said, I have a, I have a bucket of solenoid valves and some clickety clickety bits. So uh, of course. I need to use that for something. So I have I have a plan for a new use of a traditional uh, school uh, based instrument, mm. but I don't think I'm going to jump that deep into the rabbit hole on that one. So I think that's going to be a quick and dirty can you one. Not just you can just use the clicky clicky things to make the music with, can't you? Yeah, yeah, of course. But then again, you have some. You have some clickety ploinkety ploinkety instruments you can <laughs> combine it with. So yeah. yeah, I mean you need something to make some different notes. <laughs> Otherwise, it's kind of monotone with only the same clickety clickety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you tell us in an earlier podcast what you were planning on using, or did was that a private conversation that we had? I'm I don't not remember. Not sure, but it was like a. I was thinking about this a small metal xylophone. Yeah. And uh, I have a box of springs, so I just need to buy a lot of these uh, hammers or whatever they're okay. called. Uh, the chopstick with a round thing at the I end. Think, I think we've discussed uh, before, then, everything's a hammer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, everything's a hammer. Yeah. Ooh, I'm glad you said that. I need a hammer for my welds. <laughs> <laughs> you just cut cut one out from from a piece of metal no with your plasma cutter yeah that's a good idea that's oh it's so brilliant i, I needed mm -hmm. to look it up to see if this is actually doable because a friend of mine have a 
a CNC plasma cutter, which he hasn't set up because he never has the time. But then I got me thinking, well, I have a, <laughs> I have a CNC, so can't I just make a, a template? I'm not going to use the okay, CNC, yeah. obviously, but make a, <laughs> like a template, and I can use that to do like a, uh, as a guide for the plasma cutter. And yeah, that works yeah. brilliantly. So that means I can actually make real complex metal shapes. In uh, theory, for a it's moment, be a lot of, every, everything is going to be a metal project from uh, May. <laughs> <laughs> In theory, you can make complicated metal projects. I mean, we've not seen any proof yet. So that's quite a big claim. Yeah, we have to. Um, <laughs> I have to redact myself. I can make compli- I can cut complicated shapes, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I can't promise anything on uh, getting the shapes uh, together to form something. <laughs> and what's the cost of? What is the cost of metal compared to wood? I don't. I've no, I don't think I've ever bought any big pieces of metal. To be honest with you, I think metal is cheaper. Is it really? I mean, uh, well, like uh, if I want, I, I found a six millimeter metal plate, one meter times or something, and it was like uh, this was, of course, a private on a marketplace. So it was a. Uh, 150 euros or something and of course that's expensive but if you want to buy an oak slab yeah. in half that dimension you would shell out 400 euros probably I, easily. I instantly went to plywood and thinking no plywood's much cheaper than that <laughs> yeah if you go with plywood it's a high high end high end stuff perhaps yeah but that depends I mean the, the price go up really quickly when you increase the uh, thickness of the metal plates because then yeah. it's it's and it becomes really heavy as well yeah big delivery charges. then again i'm gonna I, I mean usually i will probably be in the range within one and a half to six millimeters i mean yeah. building something with uh I mean, it would be a Christmas tree foot or something where you need the, <laughs> that weight. But for other projects, you want to keep the weight down a bit. So yeah, yeah. How thick a metal can you cut with your plasma cutter? I mean, how big is the universe? The, uh, there must be a, there must oh, be a, a limit. Uh, there is a there is a limit. I think it's for for stainless steel. I think it was around six millimeter for plain steel i think you could go as high as nine but of course it's uh it's okay i just figured that's within the what i'm usually gonna do and if i need to cut something bigger then i can always use an angle grinder which i also need to get so i'm <laughs> looking into that just one yeah, well I, I have two already <laughs> <laughs> just, need one for, just need one for the metal work yeah <laughs> yeah now, I have a small one, which is not good for cutting uh, metal. It's just for, uh, like, uh, shortening screws and so on. And I have a corded one, but the rubber on the insulation is so brittle that it is a hazard. So I just use it to cut stone, and I make sure not to touch the wire in any <laughs> form or sense. <laughs> so it's a... Uh, it's not in its best shape. So I, I need a more powerful one and I want one that's battery powered since obviously I have the batteries and then of yeah. course the the plasma cutter or the welder, none of those are. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I yeah. could have a quartered angle grinder as well, but yeah, it's not really needed for that. <clears throat> Just uh, put uh, some kind of wire wheel or something like that on your, on your tiny one because it's really nice when you just clean up uh, welds and that sort of thing just yeah. not standing there scrubbing with a brush just having something small bzz, bzz, <laughs> to, to clean it up yeah well, that's true I'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna buy a brush so it's gonna... <laughs> i mean it's power tools all the way i mean <laughs> <laughs> so is the power hammer you're gonna use <laughs> yeah <laughs> you definitely need a I mean, if, if I were going to use hand tools, I would do woodworking, not metalwork. So, I mean. Yeah, you go for it. You talk about makers. <laughs> if you have anything special to say. No, not really. Just uh, 
that shamelessly we're going. Uh, plugging that we're going there <laughs> <laughs> in, ho- in hope that someone picks up on it and puts us on the maker page. Nothing. So did, nothing drastic. did you see Oakfield Creatives post today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it. <laughs> First, I thought it was you and I like commented and then, oh no, he forwarded one from Oakfield. So. <laughs> uh, brilliant. And I mean, we have the upper hand. I mean, they don't know how to count, but we are actually mm-hmm. three against two. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't... although Pierre, Pierre is a large fella, but then again, <laughs> we have KJ. So, yeah, yeah we'll, uh, one to one, I think. Yeah, it's a Swedish match. Yeah. Just uh, need to find the arena. I mean, is it a, is it a build off? <laughs> is there? Yeah. <laughs> England versus Steve, and then we have you as a wild card. You're, <laughs> you're scoring points in whatever game it is. I uh, I can be the referee. <laughs> I've actually, uh, I've put myself up for uh, as volunteer to uh, be a judge in uh, the next uh, Turgworgs challenge. So I, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I think we need to drop this. I would hate to be bullied into doing a, a, a versus podcast live on stage or something like that. That would be my worst fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, you win. <laughs> Chicken. How would you actually do that if you were arranging a podcast off? I mean, how do you compete in podcasting? I don't know. Is it is it like uh the like the chess watches? You just uh now it's your turn and you uh, work towards like a punchline and then oh we nail this yeah. one and then took your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Talking without having technical difficulties or uh, awkward silences <laughs> i think i think it's not our thing to compete in no. I ju- <laughs> dance off type uh, scenario keeps coming into my head but i can't dance either but that would just be so funny <laughs> watching you and pierre yeah, do that would be like watching mr tickle <laughs> <laughs> i do not know who that is but i'm offended anyway <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who mr tickle is do you no, not have the not by name? Do you least. not have the Mister Men in Scandinavia? Not that I know of. Okay. No. Okay. I'll let you look them up. It's just a range of children's books and then a cartoon. And... But Mister Tickle had really long dangly arms. She used to tickle people. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure if I want to <laughs> Google that now. It sounds a bit dubious. Yeah. Why don't you just run <laughs> it down on the go on. <laughs> I'm gonna go incognito when I search it. Was it Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tickler or Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tickler with long limbs? Yeah. <laughs> Tickle someone de- deep inside, perhaps. R- remind me of that after the podcast. There's another story around that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do I want to? No. <laughs> so was that was that did that conclude your business on Maker Central then, Havard? Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm starting. Other to look than I'm, to I'm it. looking forward to going. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's getting closer. So, uh, and it seems like uh, it's been a lot of posts lately. So I think the. I see the makers list is growing and there's a lot of people going that uh, it would be nice to meet. So it seems like uh, the bus is, uh, what do you see? Um, Rolling. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say intensifying, but that's a bad word. That's a different kind of buzz. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I thought you said bus. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. A bus. (laughs) The buzz buzz. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. It'd be nice. Be nice to do a whole weekend yeah, there definitely. as well. So, um, you two managed to get yourself on the makers list yet? No. I'm working on yeah. it. I mean, I see uh, KJ has uh, got a response, so I just copied his approach. Of course, I'm old. So I sent an email and then I got a reply back that there was something wrong, uh, like a recipient had not been able to something like that. So it's probably a problem with the cable over the North Sea. So 
<laughs> I needed to do that. Do as the kids does and DM them. <laughs> yeah, it, feel, it feels so. It, it doesn't feel real when you just talk to people over social media apps, I feel. It's, what's wrong with a proper email? Yeah, we start off like good day and you present yourself and then you state your business and then kind regards and then you have the signature field and everything. I mean, that's yeah. the proper way of addressing someone. But no, <laughs> just, hello is, in the DMs. <laughs> feels like. Is this how it's going to be for us when we're getting old enough to retire that we can't really stand working in an office because no one is using proper communications anymore? They're just chatting and blipping and blopping and doing stuff we don't understand you sit there and be grumpier and grumpier <laughs> oh i had a fun one this week uh, no it was last well uh, this week uh, doesn't matter of course I, I do use social media a lot and of course i do uh, spam my wife every day with uh, memes and whatnot <laughs> and of course we communicate with a lot of emojis and then someone sent me something at work uh that I have requested and done without even thinking. I probably just texted my wife like the second before. So I just pressed and automatically like uh, put a heart on it. Like, uh, thank you. And a heart. And like, okay, you just did that. And of course, if I go in and just remove it again, then it's like the other one will see that I panicked. So I like to just, I thought about it for way too long. And just oh, fuck it. I'm just leaving it. <laughs> so, a little love in the workplace. How bad can it be? Exactly. <laughs> we need more of that. So, I think I've only ever sent about three emails in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I'm yeah, I mean being... that's that's the thing with uh, working with uh, or gardening tools, some kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, but I mean, when you have uh, some kind of construction, a plumber or someone roofer or something coming yeah. no one uses email in that no. they're just they just you have to ring them and <laughs> and they always i mean they're standing I, i've seen plumbers having here more or less standing and the water is flowing everywhere and they're just oh yeah i can come next tuesday yeah it's fine <laughs> <laughs> but why don't you focus on the job you have right now and do that business some other time me and, me and my customers What's, uh communicate through text messages <laughs> <laughs> it's ideal that also feels like pretend <laughs> I mean if I if I don't have an email in my inbox I forget that anyone has talked to me I need that as a, a reminder a to-do list <laughs> yeah I mean unread emails are things that you need to address and sometimes I read an email and like I, I can't uh, fix this now so I just mark it as unread because it then is like my to-do list yeah. and of course when I do uh, punch in my hours at the end of the week what did I do on Monday and Tuesday so yeah okay I have a calendar open and then uh, who did I send emails to yeah and the outbox uh, <laughs> is really good yeah. for, for that <laughs> yeah what's uh gonna be hard i'm feeling old already and yeah unfortunately i'm gonna to have to work for a few more years so i'm gonna be that old grumpy one no yeah. if you want anything from him you have to send him an email and <laughs> if you don't uh address him with a capital letter then he's not gonna reply <laughs> <laughs> Do you... i mean I, i'm already the oldest in the office at the... so i'm the old grumpy one how do you feel when you get a text message or a WhatsApp message, for instance, and then that person then rings you back because they think that's easier. I don't like that. I sent you a text message no. because I want you to send me a text message back. I don't want to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because then I would have exactly. called you. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. And Often I also text because I don't have the time for I'm texting on the go while I'm doing something else. And then if someone is calling, it's like going to end up like talking for 20 minutes on the phone. I don't have time for that. <laughs> and now uh, Tim has spread the voice message. 
<laughs> it's like curse on our I... chats as well. And you just hear your phone go up, blah, 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 and then you're oh, okay. Like I have five minutes to listen to. Uh, yeah, I can't that's... do this when I sit in the office. <laughs> Okay, that that's a problem. I mean, uh, when I see uh, <laughs> Glenn and Tim has been like sending messages for like the entire, uh, like uh, up to lunch, and then of course I can't. I sit in an open office with several other people, so I can't press play. But it is nice when I get to the car on my way home because in WhatsApp, when you press play, it's just. <laughs> It plays a clip and then it jumps and automatically plays the next one. So I yeah. actually get to listen into a co- full conversation. <laughs> but I- I've sent a few like voice clips earlier, but that's just for a giggle. But after Tim started the, after he was the guest on our podcast and he started sending us his voice messages, I just well, I can just as well answer with one. <laughs> and then it's, I really it's like addictive, it. It's better than it? texting. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, because of course I, I like I'm fairly quick at texting, but if I need to write a long text, I fuck it. I just press record and just start talking. Yeah. And of course, uh, it's totally unfiltered and unscripted, so I'm struggling a bit for the words there every now and <laughs> yeah. then. But uh, f- fuck it. <laughs> I wish there was some kind of spell check to help. Yeah, with some of the pronunciation. I mean, you you both record a podcast. It's not scripted. I mean, it's. To do it. That's what you think. <laughs> what do you mean, not scripted? <laughs> if it is, who's writing these crap scripts? <laughs> yeah, I have an Excel list. I mean, if, if KJ says this, then you have these options. If Glenn talks about that, you have these options. And then uh, if Glenn says anything in Latin, then reference how KJ's wife is going to be pleased. And so I have like this a matrix of answers. And so uh, after a couple of seasons more, I don't even have to be here. I can just uh, have a script doing all my talking for me. Can I can I take it up a, not, not a notch and just uh, answer A, B, or C <laughs> to everything that's said? <laughs> 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 yeah, so I, I can send you a list over my standard answers, and then I can just A B C A B A B C. B. But it was yeah. a it was a, a while since we had a Latin word. I think. So can can you name our, your favorite uh, favorite uh, plant in the in the gardens at the moment? Uh, at the moment, my the favorite plant in my garden, not looking great at the moment, is Melianthus major. That's quite a rare one. Mm. I haven't got a clue what that is. <laughs> it's quite a rare one. I don't. I don't even think it has a common name. That one. Is it just made up? No, 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 it's a real plant. I mean, it must have a common name. It's something, something big. I mean, it's <laughs> a major. Is I, even I get that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The, uh... It's a big daffodil. All right, okay, then. So daffodil is Narcissus. There you go. Mm, yeah, yeah. I think I actually knew that. Yeah. Some way deep, deep down inside. <laughs> or what do you say? <laughs> I've heard, uh, I've heard a lot of people saying that. Narcissistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought they were talking about me, but now there's a house plan, so I'm, I'm pleased. It's when, it's when they put arsehole on the end, you know, they're not talking about plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, talking of names, I thought for a bit of fun, um, we could do an interaction with the CMOs and... Um, for anybody that does a decent comment on between Saturday and Sunday, we'll get their our next half pint named after them. Thought that might be a fun <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, what, sure. Why that narrow time slot? And well, all right, that specific Saturday one. and Monday because well, the the half pint comes out on Tuesday, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Well, I mean, you, 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 to a degree, I mean, if you but... can explain it better, you do it. Come on, see what you got to say. But, but what what should they comment? Just something on just what? Anything, anything that we like. Yeah. We'll just choose the best comment. <laughs> anything. 
be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Only be nice to me. I'm the one that does the Instagram. You can say what you like about the other two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, Fair point. And Fair just point. know they're yeah. constantly horrible to me. So. <laughs> Not constantly. <laughs> no, we have to sleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of sleep, let's uh, let's wind this episode up for for real this time, and uh, we'll join you next next Tuesday for the half part. Don't forget to comment if you want the episode naming after you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>